Images speak louder than words. Having a good image is just half of the battle though. If the image is non-responsive, non-resizable and overall the user experience is not that great, your app will suffer. This is where the photo view library comes to the rescue. With it you can easily create images which can be resized and manipulated and on top of that photo view also simplifies the creation of image carousals otherwise known as galleries. Is online privacy important to you? Of course it is. With NordVPN you will be safe whether you are at home on your computer or on your phone connected to a public Wi-Fi. NordVPN has got you covered with military-grade encryption, unlimited bandwidth, servers in more than 62 countries around the world, absolutely no logging, easy to use apps for all the different platforms, super fast servers, and NordVPN comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. As if that wasn't enough, now you can get 75% off NordVPN plus an additional month for free if you use the link in the description or use the coupon code RESOCODER during the checkout. Hello, welcome to ResoCoder and let's first set up the project. The first step is obviously to go into the pubspec.yaml file and import the photo view library. Link to the photo view library is in the video description and so is the fully written tutorial from which you can learn at your own pace, so definitely check it out. After we have imported the photo view and saved the pubspec.yaml file, let's create our first page which will display the most basic form of uh, photo view usage so in a new file called simple photo view page dart we are going to have the most basic implementation of photo view as you probably know flutter has a default widget called image which is perfect for simple images which do not need anything else than be displayed but photo view is here for you if the image widget just doesn't cut it anymore just like image photo view can work with network asset or any kind of other image provider even the cached image provider which basically makes sure that uh, you aren't going to unnecessarily use up the bandwidth for the same image twice so really any image provider can work with photo view in addition to that users of the app can zoom in on an image and rotate it when it's displayed inside a photo view and the library also provides a convenient way to display a loading indicator while the image is being fetched so basically the photo view library is like a package to simplify displaying of uh, zoomable and uh, rotatable resizable photos to use photo view we obviously need to first import the packages then we're gonna have a simple photo view page which is a stateless widget we want to have a scaffold here with an app bar and now comes the important part which is the photo view itself the photo view needs to have an image provider specified which can be network image asset image or any kind of other image provider as i've already said here you can use any kind of a url with network image provider i'm using uh, some images from uh, resocoder.com website then with the image provider specified we need to add some other properties to the photo view the first one is min scale so the minimum scale and we're going to set it to a constant which is photo view computed scale dot contain it's actually not really a constant it's a dynamically computed value which is handled by the photo view library but all you need to know about it is that contained means that it's the smallest possible size to fit one dimension of the screen and the min scale therefore is 80% of the smallest dimension. What does that mean? Well, it means that if we try to scale the image down, you can see that it cannot be scaled down any further than is the 80% of the smaller dimension of the screen, which is the width in this case. So you cannot scale it down more than 80% of the width of the screen. It's always going to pop back to be larger a similar property to min scale is max scale which we are going to set to photo view computed scale covered and when you set the max scale to be covered times two 
what this will do is that you will now be able to zoom in on the image to be more zoomed in than twice the size of the larger dimension of the screen in this case the height so this is one time zoomed in because it takes up the whole uh, screen right and if we try to zoom in more it's going to zoom out whenever we try to zoom in more than twice as much as is the height of the screen with min scale and max scale done and with these photo view computed scale uh, values covered we want to enable rotation now because now we were in the example app where the rotation was already enabled and we can do this but without rotation enabled we are not gonna be able to rotate the image so let's actually jump right into the actual app which we are currently developing so here we go you can immediately notice that the background is completely black we are going to change it in just a little while but we can rotate the image as we want and without the enabled rotation we would not be able to rotate the image we would just be able to zoom in and zoom out so enable rotation and the next thing that we want to do here is background decoration background decoration can set the background color and also many other things which you can set on background decoration like for example gradient you can set a custom image another kind of an image to be displayed behind the zoomable and rotatable image so box decoration is really versatile all we want to do here is to set the color to be the classic white color of the canvas so when we save now and go to the emulator you can see that the color was changed and now you cannot even see that uh, we have some kind of a view over here it looks like as if it was just floating on the default canvas so remember that the photo view actually takes up the whole screen space so if we comment this code out it takes up the whole screen in a little while you are going to learn how to make it not take up the whole screen so that you can have multiple widgets displayed on a single page for example in a list view and still be able to zoom in on a particular image because having just one image displayed on the whole screen is probably not a good use case for uh, many purposes the last thing that we want to have here is loading child you can also leave it uh, empty and it's going to display also a circular progress indicator but it looks kind of weird if you set it up yourself the circular progress indicator will look much better so now if we try to restart the app by hitting Control shift f5 and go quickly to the emulator you'll be able to see the loading indicator for a while here it is and now we have the image loaded from the resocoder.com website so this is the most basic usage of the photo view library then as i've said you can also inline the photo view so that it doesn't take up the whole screen as it does now but it takes up only a portion of the screen so you can have other widgets above it besides it or anywhere else on the same screen so let's uh, learn how to make an inline photo view right now so again we want to import stuff into this dart file we want to have material.dart and also photo view library.dart and then inside a basic page widget stateless widget we want to have a scaffold and as the body we are going to specify the center widget actually in lining of the photo view so that our widgets can be displayed around it is done through the most basic flutter widgets which are available so there is no option to inline the photo view inside the photo view library itself we are inlining it just with basic flutter widgets but i thought that i will show you this because it's something that you probably want to do if you're building an app with the photo view library we're not gonna place the photo view directly inside the center widget but we want to have an aspect ratio here an aspect ratio basically dynamically sets a fixed size for its child widget so that it takes up the most possible screen space while adhering to a defined aspect ratio what this means is that by default the clipped photo view page will look really the same as simple photo view page 
until we start to zoom in on the photo view, obviously. So we will not be able to tell the, the difference between these two pages because the aspect ratio of the image is 16 by 9. And what this aspect ratio widget will do is that even though we set the size of the image to be fixed, it's going to be done in a way that it's dynamically set so that it's going to take up the most space that it can and it's going to fit the screen just perfectly. Then this aspect ratio widget will contain a clip rect, which basically puts a mask on the child so that it will keep its original unzoomed size even while it's being zoomed in. And then this clip rect will contain the photo view, which contains all of the same things as the photo view in the simple photo view page. But we do not even have to set its background decoration here because the background will not be visible at all. All we will see is the image itself. So try and save it. And here's the thing. If we now zoom in, you can see that we are not spreading this zoomed in image across the whole screen, but only within a certain space on the screen, which is really cool. And we can even rotate the widget as we could before and now you can actually see the black background. Now let's get to the more advanced stuff because in addition to letting the user scale and rotate the photo view manually, photo view library provides controls so that you can control the view programmatically. This can be done by using a controller and this controller also gives you access to the scale and rotation data of the photo view so you can use them in some interesting way maybe remember a certain scale and rotation for future use or you can just display the obtained data on the screen as we are going to do in this app so again let's import the packages inside this dart file and controller photo view page will be a state full widget because we need to keep track of the controller and we also need to call the dispose method on the controller which can only be done inside the state class so here we go we have photo view controller and we want to instantiate it inside in its state function and then don't forget to call dispose inside the dispose function of the state class so we want to call photo view controller that dispose this is going to prevent any kind of a memory leak and just using unnecessary resources when your app doesn't need to use them anymore. And now we have the build function with the default app bar and all of that good stuff. And the body will contain a stack. What a stack does is that it puts widgets on top of each other, not like a column where it puts widgets above each other, but on top of each other here means that it operates with the depth. You'll see in just a bit if you've never seen stack before. The first child of the stack will be the photo view. We're going to get to creating these helper functions in just a bit. And then the stack will contain a column because at the bottom of the screen, we want to display the scale info, which is going to say the current zoom level is, for example, two. So it's two times zoomed in. And then we want to have a reset scale button which is going to programmatically reset the scale. The user is not going to touch the photo view itself. The user will just press the reset scale button and we are going to programmatically reset the scale. How cool is that, right? So here we are going to make the build photo view function first. Inside of it, we want to have a photo view on which we mustn't forget to specify the photo view controller, which we have set up at the top of this state class because through it we can get data out of the photo view and also push data into the photo view and then the same old stuff which is image provider mean scale max scale and background decoration and all of that good stuff then the next function is build scale info which will be done through a stream builder that's because photo view controller provides an output state stream and this stream is a way to listen on the photo views controller. So whenever some value changes on the photo view, when it's zoomed in or rotated or anything else, the stream will output a new value and we can listen to that new value through this stream builder and update the UI accordingly with a new text. If you're not familiar with stream builders, I really recommend you to 
check out the basics of Flutter. If you are familiar with Stream Builder, follow along. So Stream Builder takes in a builder and inside of it, if the snapshot of the Stream Builder doesn't have any kind of a data, we are just going to return an empty container so that user cannot see anything. However, if the snapshot has some kind of a data, we want to display the current scale compared to the original of the image. And we can get to this data by calling snapshot.data.scale. In addition to scale, you can also get information about the position of the photo, rotation, rotation focus point, and also the scale which we want to have here. So that's it for the build scale info function. And then we want to have the reset scale button, which will be simply a raise button. And whenever it's pressed, we want to set the controller's scale to be the initial scale from the photo view controller. So here we go, we are inside the controller photo view page. And when we now try to zoom in on this uh, photo here, we'll be able to see the scale compared to the original is currently 0.31 something. And we can also reset the scale by hitting the button. Let's try once more, reset the scale. And we have just reset the scale again programmatically. And whenever you set the scale to be original, it's apparently null value. That's how it's implemented inside the library. And the last thing that we're going to do here is to make a gallery of multiple photos, which can also be obviously zoomed in and also rotated if you want to import the packages. Now we have one additional package, which is photo view gallery dart. And the gallery page will be only simple stateless widget, we want to have the list of images because we are going to make the gallery through a builder just like a list view has a builder gallery also has a builder, we have three images over here. And inside the build function, we have the body of the scaffold set to be photo view gallery dot builder and photo view gallery is implemented as a page view. But it's simpler than just setting up the page view yourself because the photo view gallery abstracts many things out so that you don't need to worry about them. You can either specify images directly or by using a builder as we are going to do right now. So first thing to do is to specify the item count, which is three right now because we have only three images and then the builder, which passes in context and index will return not photo view, but photo view gallery page options, which is basically almost the same thing as a photo view, but it's specifically designed to work with the gallery. Over there, we want to specify the image provider again, and we are going to get the image URL from the image list at index, which is passed in to the builder. And then again, min scale, max scale, and outside of the photo view gallery page options directly on the photo view gallery builder, we want to specify scroll physics so that we have nice scrolling uh, animations. And then again, background decoration and loading child, these are now specified directly on the photo view gallery. And that's it. We have the first image, then the second image, and then the third image, and we can obviously zoom in and zoom out and it works as you would expect. And that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget that you can get 75% off NordVPN by clicking on the link in the video description or using the coupon code RESOCODER during the checkout for a three year subscription. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you will join the notification squad and be reminded about every single video that I upload here. Because here on ResoCoder, my mission is to provide you with the best app development material out there. If this particular video helped you, definitely give it a like and also share it with others. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. And see you in the next video.